everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of We'll Get Out with Bobby Z. And it's a Wiggy Weavy Thursday today um, because I got called in to work to a uh, matinee and an evening show yesterday. So, um, yeah, so I didn't have time to make a video. I also tried to make a video of a comb out of a wig on Tuesday night to post Wednesday morning, but my stand broke. My wall unit broke. Like, it was just the most horrible thing. And it was really dark. But I don't have great lighting, so it didn't really work out. Um, I'll try to salvage it. It's like a, an hour and a half long, even though the wig didn't even take an hour to comb out. It just took me so long to get my tripod to work, to get to fix my wall unit. And it's just like... First things first, I'm going to do a little product placement. So this was the wig that I was going to do my comb out video that I, did, I recorded myself doing my comb out on. I decided to name her G Glory Hole, not a, like a glory hole in a bathroom, but Glory Hole as in like Whole Foods, W-H-O-L-E. I mean, it's double entendre, whatever you say. So this is her. She's cute, right? Isn't she cute? She is a 2 and a 130. Um, again, a wig that I added two packs of hair to and, um, roller set it and custom styled it. She has a finger wave on this side in the front, really pretty and really pretty and hard. You can like knock on it. And then this side swoops over and I also did a nice little drag queen, uh, rooted front on her. So she's on eBay right now. The list, the listing is right here. And, um, she's going to have an $80 minimum bid and 150 buy it now. So, yeah. So, bid on Glory Hole. Make me some money and make yourself look gorgeous. Why not? Okay? Also, this video is going to have a shout out to my friend Savannah. Hi, girl. How you doing? She was so super sweet and talented and gorgeous. Her name's Savannah Devereaux. She's beautiful. She asked me for a shout out, so I decided to give her one. Um, I've never really done one before, so it's my first one. But I think I should probably do one in every video because it'll make people feel loved and make them feel wanted, you know? It's a good feeling. We all want to feel loved and wanted, don't we? Yeah. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own rat fillers. Rat fillers have mostly been used to do victory rolls and other 1940s styles. They're also really good for building up thin hair or doing anything that's more 60s where you need a big bump. It's basically the predecessor to the bump it or the poof. So Snooki can thank the rat filler for her crazy hairdo. You can buy these things at a beauty supply or at sometimes at a costume shop or a wig store, anything like that. And they usually come in blonde, brown, sometimes red or black. Now, not everyone's hair is that are those colors. Some people have blue hair, some people have pink hair, some people have strawberry blonde hair, where these color, these rat fillers won't match your hair. So I'm gonna show you guys today how you can make your own for really cheap. What you're gonna need is, you're gonna need a pack of synthetic jumbo braid in whatever color you want. Now, um, most places you can get a pack of jumbo braid for two to five dollars, depending on where you live and depending on how thick it is. So I've found that a lot of places where where they have special colors, the special colors are a little more expensive, and I can kind of understand because not many manufacturers make them, which is understandable. So this was $3. I got it at a place called Weaves New York here in the city. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, hair ties, hairspray of your choice, a brush. You were gonna need a comb, at least two clips. You're also gonna need some hair nets. You can pick these up at any beauty supply. Sometimes CVS will have them. And you kinda wanna go in the general family of what you're doing. Since I'm doing a bright red, I'm going to be using a medium brown, which isn't too dark, but it's also not too light. You're also going to need thread and a needle. I use a curved needle just because it's easier. Use whatever kind of needle you're comfortable with. You're going to need something to anchor your rat to. I usually will use my wig stand on my table or my tripod stand. I've also used a doorknob. I've used the bottom of a chair, something that's heavy that's not going to move so you can easily get around it. Now, when you take your jumbo braid out, most of the time there will be in a, usually a rubber band at the top, which splits the thing in half like this, and then it's usually pretty long. 
You'll also find that it has like a nappy kind of texture to it, which is great for teasing because it'll tease right up. Now, you can make rats in a variety of sizes depending on how you cut them down. If you're doing something really big or you're going to make yourself a drag queen bump, you use the entire jumbo braid and just use the rubber band that's on it and tease it that way. However, today I'm going to show you how to make a half size and a quarter size. Now, a half size is also pretty big. It's not quite as big as a bump, but it's pretty big. And a quarter size is perfect for victory rolls and stuff like that. Take your jumbo braid. And I just like to put a clip on either side, separated. Then what you want to do, take your scissors, and you want to cut right at that rubber band on top. Take the rubber band out and pull some hair along with it almost always. Toss it away. And then you're left with two sizes. So I'm going to show you guys a half first, and then I'll show you a quarter. What you want to do is you want to take your jumbo braid. And you're going to fold it in half again, like this. Now, if you were going to do a quarter, this is where you'd cut it. But since I'm doing a half, I'm not cutting it. Take your hair tie. And you want to loop the hair tie underneath. And then you want to go over and through to lock it, like that. See how it's locked? Great. Now, I usually buy cheap hair ties in general just because... I use them once or twice and they break or I throw them out. For something like this, you don't really want to use cheap hair ties because you're going to be tugging and tugging and tugging and pulling. So you don't want to do that. So next, you're going to get your anchor point, which for me is my trusty wig tripod stand with my wig still on top. Since I'm going to be pulling on this a lot, I like to double my elastic over just so that it's not going to be stretching as much and there isn't going to be as much tension on it. Then what I like to do is I like to take a small section of hair. Usually, I'll take a bit from either side of the ponytail, comb it up, and you just want to get in there with your brush and you just want to tease that down. And you want to tease the whole thing. Now, as you can see, I'm teasing up. That's so that I get a nice base tease at the top of my rat, and then after I get my nice base tease, I'll go through again, and I'll tease the ends even more so that it's just big and full and huge. Now you can see this is kind of starting to look like crazy. That's what you want. You want it to be as crazy and big as you can possibly get it. The more teasing you have in there, the sturdier the rat's going to be, the longer it's going to last, the less you're gonna have to mess with it and all of that. So as you can see, I just keep grabbing my ends until eventually you're left with a ball. So you can see here, I have my ball. Ta-da, ball. And you wanna take it off of your anchor point. So then you have a ball on a string. Take your hair tie out. So take your ball of hair and you kind of want to shape it into, you want to shape it into an oblong oval kind of shape. And you want to make sure that when you're, and I usually will shape it by rolling the outside in towards the middle. Now that is going to be getting you the most dense amount of hair. Now, you can make your rat really oblong like that, so you can just bump it over your head. You can fold it in half and then fold it in half again for a rounder one. It's up to you. I'm going to show you guys with this how to make a round one. Take your ball of hair in one hand and you take your hair net in the other hand. Take the ball Put it in your hand, grab it, and then you're going to pull the hairnet over it. Now, when you do this, you want to pull the hairnet taut over the hair, like that, twist it tight, like that, and roll it over again. 
just like that. Then what you want to do is you want to roll it into whatever shape you're going to make. So I'm going to make a round shape, so I'm going to roll it into more of a round little shape like that. Needle and thread of my ball. And you want to start, see how it's folded over like that? You want to start right there at that little point, which is just where it's folded over. I'm going to put your needle through, and then I like to just tie it off like that. And you just do, um, I forget the name of this stitch. I call it a ladder stitch. I'm pretty sure that that's not what it's called. Um, you basically put the needle through. And then you put the needle through so that one piece of thread hangs on one side, it th threads on the other side. So then when you pull it, it will tighten itself into a knot. So as you can see, I use pretty big stitches. And I'm using a darker thread than I normally would. Usually I'd probably use a red thread or even a clear thread, but I wanted you guys to be able to see my stitches. Now that's how you make a big round rat. Call it a quarter size because each rat is gonna be a quarter of a pack of jumbo braid. Usually what I'll do is I'll take my clip out of the center but then I'll clip off one side so that not all of the hair winds up in one rat. And jumbo braid is really tricky. Once it's cut, it flies everywhere. You're going to be cleaning it up off your floor for a month. So cut in half. So I have my clipped half and I have my not clipped half. Hair tie. You're going to go around from the back. You can also do this permanently with a needle and thread um, or with a small rubber band. I like to use the, um, the hair tie and then I can cut it off when I'm done so that I, my rat doesn't have a hair tie in the middle of it. Um, okay, so then again, trusty, trusty stand. And I will go around it two or three times with a hair tie just to make sure that it's on there nice and tight. So then with a hair with a shorter one, I'll use a comb versus a hair tie. And usually I'll use my pick. And I start in the middle and I just start picking it up. It takes a while. Uh, usually like I'll do this watching TV or listening to an audio book or something. Um, but today I'm not because I'm talking. So you have a nice little scraggly Bozo the Clown ball. You want to flip it over so you have the underside and you want to do the same exact thing on the underside. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing like I did before, taking the long hairs and then teasing those all together into a ball. And you will lose hair. Hair will pop out. It's fine. Two dollars. Literally me making it. So. Okay. So as you can see that this went into a much smaller ball than the half pack did. And that's fine. It's supposed to be small. This is how to make a long, a oblong wrap. So now what you want to do is you kind of want to tug. You don't want to pull all the, you're not going to really be able to pull all the teasing out. You want to kind of just pull it, just like that. So it's going to be into that shape already. Then I'll take some hairspray. Let's just spray down the rat a little bit just to get a little memory into it. Rat in the hairnet. Now with, an ob with a smaller one, it's a lot easier to get it in a hairnet because you can hold and you can roll the hairnet into the bottom of it. And you want to twist it really tight right at the base. You want to put your finger right there, pull it down, pop it in. Take it, twist it, pop your finger, and wrap. You want to roll it, you want to twist it, you want to pull it into the oblong shape. 
much like this. Now with an oblong one, you don't really have to sew it. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Um, it just depends on how nicely that they'll stay in their shape. This one is staying pretty good already into its oblong shape. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sew it because it's pretty good. As you can see, they are about the same length but this one is oblong and this one's more round. Thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it. Please feel free to check out my eBay shop and to like Bobby Pins Wigs on Facebook. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or any ideas for a future Wigging Out with Bobby Z video, please feel free to email me here on YouTube. I will reply to you. I always do. I love getting messages because it makes me feel wanted, of course. So please email me, subscribe, check me out, do all of that, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.